My name is Terry Malisi, and welcome to The Gathering. You see, this isn't the first show of The Gathering, but in a sense it is. Let me explain. The Gathering is a half-hour cooking show taped here in my home all day Saturday, preparing for a dinner party that I'll have later on that evening. My guests come, and the show ends with snippets of the dinner party. So, while Mike Tarosian and I were editing the second show, I had a great idea that, hey, you know, it was always my intention to have a premiere party for the show. Why not tape that show and have that show end with my guests sitting down in front of the TV to watch the first show? And then we could make it an hour special. Well, he loved it, the station loved it, here we are at the premiere party for the gathering. So, I bet you're wondering who's going to be here tonight. Let me fill you in on that too. We have family, friends, neighbors, commuters, previous guests, and co-workers. And because this is not a dinner party, it's a premiere party, it's a cocktail party. And we'll be having cocktails and a vast array of appetizers too many to memorize, so let's get to it. What I have here in front of me are the ingredients for two black cherry clafuti because I think we're hoping to have, I believe, over 20 people, so I thought two would be good. So what we have here are two pounds of Bing cherries soaked overnight in Kirsch, and Kirsch is a cherry brandy. And then you'll see I split up the ingredients for display purposes. We have a cup and a half of sugar, two cups of crushed almonds, one cup of flour, eight tablespoons of butter, two and one-third cups of milk, and 16 eggs. So what we're going to do is we're going to first incorporate our dry ingredients. And now I'm going to grab the other set of dry ingredients and throw those in. And then we'll just blend this like so. So I'll get that going. Not too fast because um, it'll go all over the place. And I have to say, baking is not my forte, but the older I'm getting, the more I'm trying it. So you'll notice I am adventurous with my desserts, and I've been known to make some pretty ugly desserts, but they are delicious. So while this is going, I'm going to plop in, Woo! you can tell I'm not experienced at this. Maybe what I'll do is I'll put the liquid in first. Sounds like a sports car I once had. Let's rev it up. Okay, now I'm going to slow it down and try this again. Stick of butter at a time. Yikes. I'll really slow it down. And then I'll drop these in there. And then I'm going to pour the total of 16 eggs in there. Okay, so the consistency is coming out really nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two pie plates and I am going to, with my hands, equally distribute the brandy-soaked cherries in each pie plate.
Oh, and it smells wonderful. Okie doke. Now what I'm going to do is take our mixture and pour it over the cherries. And then just move them around. Okay, so these look beautiful. They'll go into a 375 oven for 30 minutes. I'll meet you right back here for the next appetizer. Marinated shrimp on skewers. I have two pounds of large shrimp, a half a cup of olive oil, and three tablespoons of freshly chopped dill. Now, marinating overnight. And as you can see, these skewers have been marinating overnight as well. So what I'm going to do is take a skewer and spare the shrimp like so. One per skewer so that when my guests want to have one, they'll just pop it in the mouth and throw the skewer away. And so I don't contaminate the other skewers, I'll put these out here. So this should just take two seconds and I'll be right back. So as you can see, this recipe yielded two nice little platters of marinated shrimp on skewers. Now you can grill these or broil them for a couple of minutes until done. But because we're having a cocktail party, I'm going to put these in the fridge and cook them about a half an hour before my guests come so that I'll be able to lay them all out in the same time and we'll be ready to rock and roll. I'll be right back. And now it's on to another skewer recipe. This is my daughter's favorite all-time recipe for flank steak. This is marinated flank steak strips on skewers. And you couldn't get simpler than this. Two parts Sam Adams, one part soy sauce. So here we have the two pounds of flank steak. Now what I did was I marinated it overnight and cut them into little bite-sized pieces so that I can skewer them. And again, my guests will just be able to pop one in the mouth and skewers away. So, again, working with these wonderful skewers, take a piece, thread it, and that's it. Oh, that's good, Mike. Hold on a second. I'm going to oh. do a little bit more. A little bit of the handwork. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm wrapping up this. And what I'm going to do, because I have the skewers out, I have one more recipe that needs to go on skewers. So I'm going to get to that. That's it. And um, we'll be right back. It's time to check on the black cherry clafoutis. Mmm. Looking quite nicely. I'm going to let these come to room temperature and they'll be ready for the party. Now it's on to our next appetizer, chicken skewers. I have three pounds of chicken tenderloins cut into bite-sized pieces. They've been marinating overnight in three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, one cup of Sauvignon Blanc, a half a cup of olive oil, and 
one cup of chutney. So I'm going to go ahead again and make the skewers and I will thread the chicken on there but also with these little pieces that came with the chutney. And uh, this shouldn't take too long at all. Okay, so this just about does it. A couple more. For the chicken skewers with chutney. And they smell great, so these will be a nice little, little appetizer. So I think we're going to tackle the gazpacho next. So join me back here. Oh, hi and welcome back. Now it's on for the gazpacho. I'm going to start off with 46 ounce cans of tomato juice and one can of V8. And put these in this beautiful bowl. And I have an extra can of tomato juice in case I need it. Two cups of extra virgin olive oil. See how this is. Mm. Perfect. I'm going to stand here and savor this for a second. Then we'll be on to the next appetizer. And now it's on to masked strawberries. Just another name for strawberries dipped in chocolate. But what's nice about these is that I'm going to be using two tablespoons of rum and two tablespoons of caro, corn syrup. We have a stick of butter and three cups of semi-sweet chocolate. And what we're going to do is I washed and dried each strawberry, you want to leave the caps on because basically once I put all of this in a double boiler and get it melted, we're going to take it, dip them, and then turn them upside down on their caps so that, you know, when my guests pick one up, they'll pick them up by the cap, take a bite, and then chuck it. It's all about finger food tonight, mostly. So, um, I'm going to this production over here and we'll get going. And this is looking beautiful. I don't know if you can see how how rich and thick and shiny that chocolate is. Now see this is just perfect 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to take each strawberry, dip it in, and then gingerly lay it on the sheet. Oh, I'm thinking it's going to be quite messy, so, and we're running out of time here, so I'm just going to get going in production mode. We'll see you back here. Okay, well, those strawberries are in the fridge, chillin'. So now it's on to Thai chicken balls. What we have here is three pounds of brown chicken, four scallions sliced, one cup freshly chopped cilantro, one tablespoon ground coriander, two tablespoons fresh lemon juice, three tablespoons sweet chili sauce, and two cups of fresh breadcrumbs. So what we're going to do is mix everything up and make little balls, bite-sized balls. Smells amazing. And then we'll make a little chicken ball. There you go. And here we have the Thai chicken balls. Can't wait to try these. They're going to go in this pan and in that oven at 350 for about 20, 25 minutes. Keep a close eye on them because your doneness may vary from mine. And now it's on to salmon cakes with herbed mayo. What we have here is two pounds of a salmon filet. And I had the fishmongerer uh, lay it and get it and bone it. And then I cut them into little chunks. And we also have three tablespoons of dry breadcrumbs, one tablespoon lightly beaten egg. We have a half a teaspoon of finely grated lime zest. We have three and a half teaspoons of lime juice and we have three teaspoons of fresh dill chopped. So what we're going to do is just put all this together and again Mix this up. And basically, what you just want to do with this recipe is just give it a good coating because we're not going to shape them into cakes. It's the idea is to resemble a fish cake or a crab cake or even a salmon cake. But because they're already in little bite-sized pieces, it'll be perfect for my guests to take a toothpick and pop one in their mouth. So I'm going to lay these. And I guess if you want, depending on how small you cut the cubes, 
you can squish two together if you like. But it's up to you. And as you watch more episodes of The Gathering, you'll learn that nothing has to be perfect. Nothing has to be how the recipe says. You go ahead and make your own way. Make your own party. Now the nice thing about this is you can fry these, but I like to bake them because I think they wouldn't hold up as nicely if you fry them as they will. So these will go into the oven 350, again maybe 15 minutes. And uh, we don't have many more appetizers to go, so I'm going to figure out what we have left to do, and I'll be back. And now it's on to one of my favorite appetizers, crab stuffed mushrooms. Now I've been making these for years. Very simple. You can either use Alaskan king crab, and that's what I usually use, or crab. And uh, that's the only crab they had available. So I bought three pounds of that, took them home, steamed them, took them out of their shells, and up with. Now I have one teaspoon of garlic powder, and then I'm going to take the mayonnaise. You can use any kind of mayonnaise that you want, as long as it's not sandwich spread. So what you want to do is just mix this up break it up, break up the crab, and it smells delicious. And one thing I love about this recipe is you don't bake it. The mushrooms stay raw, and it's kind of like a cold crab salad, and that's all it is. And because there aren't many spices in the recipe, you can really appreciate the crab. So. I'm going to let that sit for a minute. Mushroom, melon baller. Now because when you take off a cap, you're not left with much um, room in there for a stuffing like this. So I like to take a melon baller and just hollow out so I get a little bigger bowl. And so I'm going to do that while this is incorporating all the flavors in the crab. And you can just watch along. Okay, so I'm down to my last mushroom. And I have a mushroom left over. And I have to say, I'm a little bummed that we're not going to have any leftover crab for me to snack on. So, these will go in the fridge and stay chilled. My guests arrive. And now I'm going to move the top balls onto a platter and continuously check on the salmon bites. Okay, now it's on to pesto bagel chips. I took a bagel, actually four, and sliced it. Not this way, that way. And I have two cups of pesto and two cups of Parmesan cheese. And what I'm going to do is toast the bagel chips in the oven, out of the oven. Spoonful of pesto, sprinkle Parmesan, Bake it two minutes, that's it. See you back. So here I am putting, oh, I'd say about a half a teaspoon of pesto on each bagel chip. And then what I'm going to do is sprinkle Parmesan. And then I'll throw them in a 350 oven and watch them closely for about five minutes and then we'll be good to go. Hi, welcome 
welcome back. Well, you can see things are a little bit different now. We've got people here, and we're all dressed for a cocktail party. And because Mike was 45 minutes late getting here today, I still have like two, if not three more dishes to make. So here I am still cooking, but that's okay because no one seems to mind. Everyone has a drink in their hands and the food's out. And you know, they're, they're having a good time, which is what it's all about. So, um, here I am with my AM train buddy, very good friend Lini and Doran and her good friend Jen. Jen and uh, I'm just going to get going on this appetizer, which of course you would say to yourself, I know what those glasses are for. Wine, right? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> what we're going to use these for is for an appetizer. And it's called veggie glasses. So I'm going to make a dip and then put a veggie in each glass. And there you go. People who want it, you know, normally I always have a vegetable platter and a cheese platter at my gatherings, you know, because who doesn't love cheese or veggies? But then I was like, well, let me just take it to a different level, you know, instead of um, doing that tray thing, do the glass thing. And I didn't do the cheese thing because that's too easy. And this is a premiere show for a coach. So, okay, we'll get going. <laughs> so what we have here, three cups of sour cream, two cups of mayo. Now, this is my intention. But as I was putting things together, people were walking away with glasses, and my daughter was snipping on the, the <laughs> thanks, <laughs> the vegetables. <laughs> so the plan was to have, you know, one of each and then two in each glass. So it's not going to be perfect, but hey, this is the gathering and nothing is. So, um, so we have that. and. For the herb dip, we have a cup of chopped fresh parsley. <laughs> You're missing it, Charles. My Vanna White impression. Two tablespoons of freshly chopped tarragon. And I'd say about a cup of chopped scallions, two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon, and oh, I'd say about a teaspoon of chopped garlic. So very simple. We're going to put all of the zip things in the food processor. And then once we get everything incorporated, we're just going to Fill the glasses with the vegetables. Can you see me? Can you hear me? <laughs> okay, so that looks good. Good enough to eat. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Ooh, soupy. <laughs> okay, it's a dip, right? Yikes. And I guess, I guess because, um, if you'd like a thicker version, <laughs> um, add some cream cheese. There you go. That's great. Oh, how cute. I love it. There you have it. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> I don't have anything fabulous to say except Terry's fabulous. That's all Did you get that on film, Terry's fabulous? Yep. So how do you know Terry? I know it from work. You work with her? Yes, I work. With, I work for a different company, but we're on the same floor, and we run into each other all the time. She's a great woman. And what have you heard about her cooking? Oh my gosh, that is awesome. That's all I've heard. Yeah. Um, I actually work with Terry, and this is my friend Jen. So. Excellent. And um, have you heard about her cooking antics? I've heard a lot about her cooking, so I'm excited to try everything. Now, you notice some of the food on the plate? Is it hard to hold back? Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> my name is Chelsea Resnick, and Terry's my mom. Um, really
really excited about the show. It's been really busy here all day, but I think it's going to be great. And I've been trying a little bit of everything. It's all delicious. And um, have, have you seen the show yet? Did you get a preview of it yet? I have not. So, so you'll be like all the other guests and just see it for the first time tonight? Yes. So I'm really excited. I hear it's great. It's always a production around the house. Just their regular meals alone are productions. Absolutely. There's three people in the house. She always cooks for an army. Okay, so here we are with the very last dish, and then maybe we can get to the premiere of the gathering. This is sesame and wasabi crusted tuna. So we have two pounds of fresh tuna cubed. We have wasabi paste, wasabi powder, black sesame seeds, sesame oil for the dish, sesame oil for the wok. We have freshly grated ginger, mirin, which is sake, and soy sauce. And if you want the measurements at this point, hit the website, because you're not getting them here. <laughs> okay, so now what we're going to do is just mix everything together. Chels, go wash your hands. <laughs> Just mix everything together. Okay, and then you take your hands. I do. You do. And just mix it all up, Charles. The whole world is watching. Well, at least most of the hot kids. Some of the hot kids. I mean, now what? Chelsea, you like cooking? <laughs> um, she loves it. I, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm not really um, that experienced. I can make a mean set of scrambled eggs and mac and cheese, uh, but I'd say that's about it. <laughs> I can want to coat the wok with the oil, and you can do it any which way you want, as long as you don't spill it on the floor. <laughs> Oh, you can smell the heat, and I'm not talking the fire. This is very spicy. So, um, so for those who like spicy, I think you'll like it. No, I'm to keep the dip. Don't have to tell me Cherry, well, I've known Cherry for many, many years. Um, she's been a neighbor. I live uh, across the lake on Woody Island, and I've been over here uh, many times and uh, have experienced. Uh, some of her wonderful cooking in the past and uh, she has brought food over to my house as well when we've had parties and uh, different uh, occasions on different occasions and uh, I know that um, to my experience I'm here this evening to test out because of the premiere to test the food but I already know that the food's really really great so I want to wish Terry all the luck in the world this evening and I do uh, tremendously look forward to seeing this TV, the premiere, and her, her working very hard on, uh, uh, you know, showing the people of Hopkinton or the people of the Metro West area uh, some cooking, uh, some different ing ingredients, and uh, how to cook some very, very special dishes. So Hi there, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Hi, here we are. Here we are at the premiere party for the gathering. Yay! Woohoo! So, um, as you can see, the first show is getting ready to premiere. I want to thank you all for coming and enjoying all the famous dishes I prepared tonight. And if you'd like the recipe, please go to the website, check it out. You can also, if you're not in the area, you can watch the show on HCAM TV through streaming video. Yay! <laughs> so thanks and enjoy the show and uh, I hope you can stick around afterwards and, you know, drink a little more, eat a little more. and. Hello, my name is Terry Malisi, and welcome to the gathering. I have to say I'm not a professional chef, personal party planner, or private caterer. I am, however, a gourmand, 
And a gourmand is one who favors good eats. And hey, who doesn't? I gave my first dinner party when I was 17 and have hosted countless dinner parties and special celebrations since. So many, in fact, people started calling my home the gathering. So when I was cooking breakfast for the senior center of uh, volunteering some time ago, I was asked if I would consider hosting a cooking show. And I said, well, I love to cook, I love to entertain, so sure, I'll give it a shot. And I thought, what better name for the show than The Gathering? So again, welcome. Tonight's dinner is titled Ketchup Dinner with Friends, and my guests are my very good friends, Sharon and Dick Moran, and Patty and Steve Bryant. And for the menu, for appetizers, we're having zucchini and gorgonzola rounds, pate stuffed mushrooms, and brie baked with mango chutney. For a salad, we'll be having watercress and Belgian endive with cucumbers and grape tomatoes. For our main course, we're having stuffed beef rolls, scalloped potatoes, and carrots lyonnais. And we'll finish the dinner with a peach and pear cake. So let's get to it. I always like to start with my dessert so it has time to bake and set if need be. So for my ingredients, I have 30 ounces of sliced peaches drained, 15 ounces of sliced pears drained, one cup of softened butter, three-fourths cup of sugar, one cup all-purpose flour, one-third cup of milk, two beaten eggs, and three-quarters cup of ground almonds. Now for the topping, I have two teaspoons of cinnamon, I have a quarter cup of sugar, and I have um, a half a cup of butter melted. So what we're going to do is we are going to take the sugar and mix it with the butter. We're going to beat this until it's light and fluffy. So I'm going to slowly add my beaten eggs. Now once that is where I want it to be, I am going to fold in the flour and the milk. So what I have here is a 9 inch uh, spring form pan already greased and I'm going to pour my batter into the pan and I'll spread this around so that it's nice and even and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread the fruit over the cake Sprinkle the ground almonds. That is looking pretty good. And then what we're going to do is we are going to mix up our topping. So I'll add my cinnamon and my sugar and my melted butter. Give that a good whisk. Smells great. And then I'm going to drizzle that over the cake. Now, I have my oven preheated at 350. And what the recipe calls for is to put the pan on another pan and also have a pan to put on top of it until the last 15 minutes of baking. So I'm going to put this in the oven. I'm going to put this on top of the cake. 
and we should be there. I'm going to start off with the baked brie with mango chutney. I have my two rounds of brie. I have two nine ounces of mango chutney and ground cashews. And this is very simple. Take the brie, put it in a pie plate, spread the mango evenly over the brie and sprinkle with the cashews. There you have it. Very simple. And what I'm going to do is when it's time we will bake this um, just until the brie is softened inside the rind and the cashews are lightly browned. And now for the zucchini and gorgonzola rounds. I started out with three small zucchini, one package of gorgonzola, 20 grape tomatoes cut in half, oh, about one cup of Parmesan cheese, and 40 little baby basil leaves. Now for the zucchini, what you want to do is take a melon baller and scoop out the inside, taking care not to go through. As you can see, you just twist it around, leaving a nice little hole there in the center. And we're going to take a piece of gorgonzola cheese, and you can mold it in because it should be softened so you can work with it better. You're going to take a grape tomato <laughs> and plop it on top, and then what we're going to do is drizzle a little Parmesan cheese one basil leaf and pop it on top. What we're going to do for these is bake them in the oven for five to seven minutes at 400 degrees. And now it's on to the pate stuffed mushrooms. What I have here are 24 mushroom caps hollowed out again with that melon baller. I found it to be quite helpful because when you take the stems off, you're not left with much room for filling and I know um, this is a really special stuffing so I wanted to make sure each one had enough. I have the stems coarsely chopped from the mushrooms, one finely chopped shallot, and two tablespoons of bread crumbs. Uh, freshly ground. And over here I have one cup of Greer cheese freshly grated. Uh, we'll top that at the end. So what we need to do is take, oh yes, the main ingredient, a pound and a half of pate, which is, I couldn't make a meal out of this alone. We're going to take the chopped stems Put them in, in the shallots, and the breadcrumbs. And we're going to mix all of this up so that everything gets incorporated. With a teaspoon, I'm going to stuff each cap generously. with the pate. It seems I might have quite a bit left over, so what I might do is just have the pate off to the side in a separate little dish. 
as an extra appetizer. And then I'm just going to take the Gruyere and again generously sprinkle. I'm going to put these on a greased cookie sheet and like our zucchini and gorgonzola rounds these will cook in a 400 degree oven for five to seven minutes. So I will put these in together right after the brie comes out of the oven. Okay, now it's on to the watercress and Belgian endive salad with cucumbers and grape tomatoes. We have four bunches of watercress, four heads of Belgian endive, two pints of grape tomatoes, three cucumbers sliced, and what my mother used to do was run a fork over the cucumbers after they were peeled and it gives you this nice little ridged effect on the end. And we have for the dressing, which I will make after we put the salad together, um, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, ten tablespoons of salad oil, and two teaspoons of fresh dill. Okay, so I'm going to start putting this together. And what I like to do is line the plate with the Belgian endives. Now you want to take your watercress and pile it in the center. This makes for a really beautiful presentation. Then you take your cucumbers and make a border around the endive. Then for the grape tomatoes, I think for an effect, put them right. In the endive leaves, and then going around the edge of the cucumbers. As you can see, it didn't take much time to put that together at all. So we'll push this over and we will combine all of our ingredients for our dressing and I am mixing it in this plastic container. I'm just going to whisk this a little bit incorporate that all together and then I will refrigerate this and put it in a pitcher right before. Before we start with the main course, I wanted to show you the cake. It came out of the oven quite nicely. It's going to set for about another hour. For the stuffed beef rolls, we have six sirloin steaks. And what I did was I got sirloin steaks about that thick and had the butcher uh, slice them in half. I have 12 slices of prosciutto, which is dried and cured ham. I have 12 slices of provolone cheese and 12 basil leaves. And basically that's all this recipe is. We start with a sirloin steak and we put two slices of prosciutto. We put two slices of provolone and you want to make sure that you keep the edges, the cheese, away from the edges of the steak. And take two basil leaves. Plop them in. And that is it. And you roll it. 
you squish together the ends and you tuck everything in. And there you have it. And what we're going to do, once I get all these made, is I am going to brown them in a little olive oil and then bake them in a slow oven for an hour. These are our stuffed beef rolls, ready to go into the oven, 325, very slow oven for an hour. They are looking pretty darn good. And what I'm going to do here is cover this and then put them back in the oven for the last 15 minutes. I melted one stick of butter on pretty high heat to get the butter nice and hot. And I have two large onions chopped. I'm just going to start to saute those. And I have two tablespoons of freshly chopped parsley. Get that in there. And then here I have four pounds of baby carrots. cut into bite size pieces. Once I have all the carrots coated with the butter and the parsley and the onions are nicely mixed, I'm going to turn down the heat and forget about it. It will cook for maybe a half an hour. Low heat, um, covered, and we'll keep checking on it to see how, uh, how they're coming along. Okay, so it's on to our last dish, scalloped potatoes. What I have here is five pounds of potatoes peeled and thinly sliced six tablespoons of heavy cream, three tablespoons of softened butter, one bay leaf, a touch of nutmeg, three garlic cloves chopped, and four cups of milk, salt and pepper to season. So what we're going to do is we are going to put these potatoes into a saucepan. And then we're going to take the milk, well actually, I'm going to put the bay leaf in, and we're going to put the nutmeg in, and then we're going to take the milk and pour it till it covers the potatoes, reaches the top and not covers them. And that is just about a perfect measurement. What we're going to do is put this on the stove, cook it just until the potatoes are somewhat tender, not fully cooked. Then we're going to transfer them into a casserole dish with the heavy cream butter and garlic and salt and pepper and then we'll bake it. While that is cooking we are going to butter casserole dish. And then I'm going to take my garlic and drizzle it on the bottom. So the pan should look like that. Alright, All right. so the potatoes are partially cooked and it's time to get them into the casserole pan and into the oven. So with the slotted spoon, you're going to take the potatoes 
out of the milk, discard the bay leaf, and <laughs> layer the potatoes into your casserole pan. Of course, they will finish cooking off in the oven, 350 degrees for one hour. I'm going to season the potatoes, a little salt and pepper. And then pour the cream over the top. Now this is ready to go into the oven. So, again, it will go in for an hour at 350 and we're just about there. So, once this goes in the oven, I'm going to set the table and get ready for my guests. See you soon. <laughs> oh, here's my good friend Patty. Welcome back. We have the appetizers out and ready to go. Come on over here, Steve. This is Steve Bryant, Patty's husband. And we have Sharon over here. Sharon, you want to come, come over? Come on, Sharon. Get in come the picture. Here. Here. Yes. Say hi. Uh, hi. hi. <laughs> and of course, we have the pate stuffed mushrooms, zucchini gorgonzola rounds, and baked brie with mango chutney and the leftover pate from the mushrooms. <laughs> so we're going to get going and um, hope you all had a great time and please join us for the next show of The Gathering.